But what up guys, it is Justice here. This summer is going to be absolutely awesome. I cannot believe or comprehend the amount of information that RuneScape have released to us today. Yes, there's not loads of detail, but there is a huge volume of various different updates that they have now confirmed to us. There have been plenty of rumours of all these different things happening. We have had no idea when these different updates are going to be hitting us. These updates, for example, are going to be Tusker World Event, which we have always known is going to be released on the 1st of June. We also have raids confirmed, guys, and supposedly a brand new environment that's going to be bigger than Priftinaz that you're going to be able to explore with a 10-man team on a raid. That is going to be absolutely ridiculous. My expectations are very high. I will keep my expectations high for you all. I know many of you might not try and have too much, too many high expectations to not be disappointed in case it, you know, the rewards aren't great. But I'm trying to keep my faith and my hope that this raid is really going to revitalize PVM. I don't know how, what they're going to do uh, in terms of maybe item sinks or whatever they're going to do. But in terms of this new raid, it's going to be a 10-man adventure into a whole new environment. Um, and I am so pumped up for it. It's unreal. I am honestly so hyped right now. There's so much stuff. Rune dragons, adamant dragons are going to be coming out. All of this over the summer, over the next three to four months, supposedly, if I read it correctly by the homepage. So, all of this they have been bundling up, ready to release, and they have released all of this information in one day. And right now, I am so pumped because it's been a, almost a year. By the time it gets to July, I think it's about a year since Araxor was released on RuneScape. And an entire year with no real new big PVM content is is quite a long time so right now we're confirmed that tusker yes tusker is not going to be a huge pvm content but raids will be there's also going to be a huge quest which is an expansion to the plague's end quest and that's going to be a sequel so that is something very exciting because plague's end was a very good quest so that's well it was a pretty decent quest anyway not very long but it was a pretty decent quest and of course it opened up that whole priftinas city area so this new quest is probably going to open up a, another area for maybe these new raids that are going to come into play either way it's all going to be connected somehow and i cannot wait to see how this is going to actually unfold over the summer period let me know how hyped you are in the comment section everything which you've heard any like information that you've gathered from reddit from the homepage, from youtube let me know let everybody know in the comment section let's discuss let's get hyped around the upcoming summer events that are gonna be absolutely ridiculous it is really gonna change this game hopefully for the better hopefully for the future and to be honest it will be dependent in terms of the high level community it'll be dependent on the rewards that we get from these new raids how good are these rewards going to be are they going to be balanced are they going to revitalize pvm and fix what has happened over the past year on top of all of this updates that have came today are the deaths rework so be sure to not do too many justice rips across the community otherwise you're going to lose a lot of money but also that may benefit the economy due to the amount of money sinks that's going to happen over this update also on top of that we have meteorites that are crashing down onto Gilanor right now, which giving you bonus experience points. And I don't know whether that's across all skills. I'm assuming it's across all different various skills. Um, it has been confirmed by a friend of mine in the clan chat, Dinka, who received a meteorite just whilst killing celestial dragons. So again, I think it's across all skills, but I'm not quite sure yet, of course, because it's only just been released. And on top of all of this, supposedly there's been a small little update, which actually might be bigger than what it actually is. Today, there is going to be a lot of Saradamin hype, and I'm probably going to stream it today or tomorrow in order to try and obtain the offhand armadillo crossbow, which has now been added to the game, a level 75 weapon. On top of all of this, there has been an update with armadillo crossbows, a drop from the boss Saradamin in the God Wars dungeon. Armadillo crossbow or sarah only used to drop one main hand armor crossbow it was bizarre people would use it with like an offhand dragon crossbow or an offhand carol's crossbow because at that time the armor crossbow was tier 70 so they've actually upgraded the damage now which it, which it inflicts that the, the uh, tier of this weapon now is tier 75 and supposedly a couple sold for about eight mil about an hour ago and i'm making this at four or three p.m game time on the 26th of may so again they're not going to be that expensive or anything because obviously sarah is a very easy boss but just a quick little update those tier uh, weapons have gone up by five levels and now you can get dual armored or crossbows from saradamin so it might be a good option for people who are around that level in terms of equipping weapons a really good option for you guys in between maybe dual carol crossbows or maybe the crystal weaponry moving on to the armored or crossbows before getting to your chaotics 
All right, scrap that. One of my mates has literally just got it after three kills. His RNG is ridiculous. <laughs> just to any boss on this game, I just it amazes me. His name is Sam, X Sam, and he's just managed to sell his offhand for 3.8 mil. One of the most important things with the death rework, I would say, is related to double graving. Can you double grave still? Yes, you essentially can still double grave. The way you double grave essentially is when you die, as you will see on screen in a minute when a Raxor completely wrecks me, um, I will go to the death's lair. If I decide to leave the death's area and go and after my grave myself, um, and I die on the way to that grave, then essentially the only items that are stored at death are the recent items that I have wielded whilst going for my grave. So all the items that are stored currently in the grave will disappear and that is essentially double graving. Items will be stored with death for 24 hours of in-game time. You may return to him at any point to reclaim them. Gravestones will still be added after death and will allow you to reclaim items. It will spawn as soon as you log out, leave death's office or after five minutes within death's office. If you choose not to reclaim your items, the items death is holding will be lost if you die and lose items again, and essentially that is the double grave system. So when you exit the death's area now, you can actually choose whether you want to go to Falador, Lumbridge, Soul Wars, Prithanaz, or just exit via the portal. So exit via the portal, see where we end up. Ooh, interesting. So as you can see, the entrance to Death's Lair has been graphically reworked and it looks pretty damn good. There is also a bank now at Death's office, so you do not need to teleport out and go to your nearest bank. So of course, yes, I was just wearing some Bandos armor. This shouldn't be that expensive. I wasn't going to go out and flip in wear all my tier 90 armor, you know, and obviously have to pay 3 mil or however much it's going to be. So I'm just going to see what percentage it is compared to the drop, uh, the items that you've dropped. So you now have a right click option, reclaim items. So now this whole new interface comes up, you've got my steadfast boots. So these are my protected items, you save these items for free. All right, that's cool. So it automatically saves your three most expensive items. Max cape, actually, yeah, to be honest, the item value is 2.5 million. Damn, I forget that. It's actually, my max cape is actually more expensive than Bandos Tassets, interesting fact. So, how much is it going to save? Total cost to save is 1 million. Okay, either way, it's, it takes you 3 minutes to get back to your grave. You can also extend it with Sign of Respite. So, you have a very high chance that you're going to get back to your grave. The only reason why you wouldn't get back to your grave in this day and age is if you died at God Wars Dungeon without a Soul Stone. So, make sure to use your Soul Stone, guys. Charge those up with hard mode versions of the God Wars Dungeon bosses. And therefore, you can get straight back to your grave in case you AFK or die for any particular reason. And therefore, you could save yourself a lot of money. Uh, if you don't get, if you don't manage to get back to your grave within three minutes, you DC, for example. Then, when you come back, just be warned: the Salem Ring and the Dragon Rider th items like this, which are unique from quest rewards, are actually fairly flipping expensive to reclaim. 500k each to reclaim, because I guess if you lost them completely, it would cost you 500k to reclaim it from the quest NPC. But still. I don't know, it's hard to get your head around a Silent Ring costing 500k compared to Bandos Tassets only costing you 38k to save. Um, I've just managed to get 8.8k Dungeoneer experience from uh, investigating this mysterious meteorite. There seems to be around, on average, between four or five times that you can use the meteorites. I'm guessing there seems to be some sort of experience limit per day that you can gather from these. And it is from skilling, but obviously you can use other meteorites that other people spawn. And at the moment, you can actually only use the meteorites or gain experience from them if you have their VIP um, gold membership, for example, or the summer three-month package. Also, you don't need to have had a whole package. You can actually just be a member consecutively for 12 months, and you will also gain access to this additional experience reward. Thank you all for watching today's video. I will be streaming the entire day tomorrow, or virtually the entire day, Tusker Hype World Event 3. It is going to be huge. Again, no big PVM hype, but it's going to be a great community gathering, um, all working together to save Gillenor from the World Eater. Feel free to check out my Twitch channel down below. I will be live there tomorrow, and I am virtually live there every day pretty much throughout the week except for one day. So feel free to check me out if you haven't already. I will see you guys in my next video. Good luck on your PVM trips, and happy scaping. Thank you.